So Jack Ryan, 13 um, bestsellers, four feature films. It's been captivating cinema goers and readers for decades. Um, I'm wondering how much of a fan you both were before this film. I loved it. I remember yeah. exactly where I was when I saw Hunt for Red October. It was just one of those movies that just captured my imagination. And I was in from then on in. Me too. I loved Hunt for Red October. It was my favorite of the series, actually, but of the first four. Uh, and um, uh, it's something I've never forgotten, even though it's quite a long time ago now. Um, and financial terrorism is a novel idea for a spy genre, but not too far-fetched. Um, to what extent is this the sort of plot line that we think the late Tom Clancy might have come up with? Well, I don't think it's far-fetched even a little bit. I mean, if you really look at, don't, don't you think everybody feels like the markets and the countries that they're in, they're getting manipulated by people we don't really know how we can control it? So I actually think it's something very current in the 21st century. It's the thing that Clancy's books always did so well, was it took something that was really happening at the moment, you know? And you see these market manipulations and you don't really know who did them, why they did it, what happened. So it was actually a subject matter that when we discovered, sort of came upon it, we thought, well, that's about as relevant as it gets right now in the middle of, that was then part of the recession. We went through the recession in the United States and the global recession, and you know, it's, it's a pretty current topic, I think. Actually, while we were shooting, there was a um, uh, report in the newspapers that um, threats to do a similar thing had been made, uh, I think, by China to, to, uh, to Japan. Or, or there was, some, there was, a, there was a, a certainly a very relatable um, uh, world power uh, muttering uh, sort of similar threats actually which um, really brought the, the, the reality of the whole plot home. Um, and you mentioned the relatability there, um, Jack Ryan is sort of the everyman spy. Mm. Um, how important is it that he remains so relatable whilst saving the world of course? <laughs> it's what makes him special. Yeah, it's what he I, is. I think that's, I think it's, it's the, it, it makes him different than all the other characters first of all. And he's not a guy who's so gung-ho and ready to go and ready to fight. He really doesn't want to. He'd rather sit behind a desk and think. But his emotional uh, and uh, mental convictions are the things that drive him to do it. So I think we, I, I feel like he's that kind of guy you wish you were. It's kind of the best, the best kind of patriotism, I think, actually, in the sort of post-9-11 world. is someone who's not... Um you know, a, a gung-ho patriot, but um, he cares very deeply for his country and he does, as a consequence, he has no option but to do the right thing. Absolutely. Um, and the film boasts with breakneck speed through um, at multiple locations, Manhattan, Moscow, London. Mm. But I understand a lot of the filming was actually done in London and Liverpool. Um, how important are the UK's creative talents to the film industry? I'm thinking at the moment the success of Gravity and obviously your work in Harry Potter. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's, I think the English um, uh, crews and the talent, the, the infrastructure that exists in this sort of quite small country is huge by comparison to the overall size of the industry. Um, and it just means that anybody can come here and do whatever they want and know that they can find the personnel uh, that they need and the, whatever, the facilities that they need uh, to, to do it with. I think it's, yeah, it's fabulous. Um, and finally, various actors have played Jack Ryan, um, but it's been said that Chris Pine redefines the character. Um, what qualities does he bring to this much-loved CIA agent? Chris is naturally a really thoughtful guy, and I think you have to believe that Jack Ryan is able to make these gigantic leaps of logic and intellect, and so on a, just on a really basic level, you have to have that, but he's not a show-off-y kind of guy, and I think that's the the thing that he pulled off incredibly well was just there's a reserve, there's a there's a, a humbleness to the approach that he took that makes you go, I really like him, maybe I could even be a little like him, maybe not think as smart as he is, but I could be a little bit like him. And so, you know, he's pretty handsome too. So, you know, all those things kind of work pretty well for the, for the character. I'd be happy just to be as tall as him. <laughs> <laughs> David Barrow and Lorenzo de, um, de Bonaventura, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Pleasure, thank you. Thank you.